Nobody else has got one of them. Nobody else at all. So Daddy or George will help you go through. The front page. Help you go through with the whole of the Mass, with the words that I say, and the prayers that you answer. Okay? <coughs> but you have to learn them. Okay. Here is where you're learning about Jesus. Yeah? Okay? So you need to learn these prayers. Alright?
forget to make sure your masks are on completely, covering your noses, please. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. First thing is, you might see Angel May doing some writing in a book. She's not being naughty, she's being very good, aren't you? She's learning the prayers of Mass because in two years' time she'll be ready, we hope. The first Holy Communion. So, can you see them nodding? As it will start. Is it back on? Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. So they're very clever. They know it in two languages, English and Polish. They might even know Latin as well. Who knows? So your job is very easy, Angel Man. Okay. So make sure you're working through the book. The scripture this weekend is incredible, amongst the most important that we hear, and as ever, amongst the most challenging. So we'll sing the Kyrie Christe, which is Greek, not Latin, and if you'd like to, please adopt a penitential gesture.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to unite the whole of our parish, to beware of those who now, for nearly a year, have not left home. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So before this very important reading from the Old Testament, just a quick reflection. What had happened to the people of the, the Hebrews that they are now in this incredibly important position and relationship with God? They fled to Egypt because of a famine. They became slaves. And God chose Moses to be the one to bring about their liberation. Moses had this incredible argument with Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the known world. The angel of death passed over the people of Israel. They left in the exodus from slavery to freedom. They received manna in the desert and water from the rock. And then God speaks these words. But clearly, God has already established the covenant with them. They're already in a relationship of love. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I punish the father's fault in the sons, the grandsons, and the great-grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labour and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath for the Lord your God. You shall do no work that day. Neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servants, men or women, nor your animals, nor the stranger who lives with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and all that these hold. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day, and made it sacred. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or his servant, man or woman, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord.
Second reading, Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching the crucified Christ. To the Jews an obstacle that they cannot get over, to the pagans madness, but to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, Take all this out of here, and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, What sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, Destroy this sanctuary, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I know it's hard for you to believe, but I've got myself in trouble. Are you still with me? Because I have said that Jesus is not nice. Pretty clear in the Gospel, Jesus is strong, is aggressive, is completely focused on his mission. And sure, we're invited into that. And the mission that he has been given is to open the way to the Father, to allow people to experience the Father so the Father can literally pour love into our hearts. And Jesus goes to the temple and cannot get to the sacred place, nor can the other people, because literally there is a market. So the strong man, the strong man acts, clears it all out. And then we have a prophecy of death and resurrection. 
And this clearing of the temple so that people can experience the Father is so important to us. Bishop Mark loves a writer from the United States, a lady called Sherry Waddell. And her research right around the world says that in any Christian congregation, not just Catholics, any Christian congregation, 60% of the people have not experienced the love of the Father being poured into them. Which is so sad, because this was the mission of Jesus, so that we could experience this love, this presence, this awareness. Now, many people in our parish of St. Maximilian have had wonderful experience of God. Their lives utterly changed, new awarenesses of Jesus, the Spirit, the loving Father. But as pastor, I've got to take these words and this action of the strong man and do my best to enable Jesus' action to be true here as well. It's the whole reason why I was ordained to lead the people of God in this way, to preach and to celebrate the sacraments. Now, I mentioned last week, I didn't have the name of the parish, it's Mary the Mother of God in Bradford. You kind of guess it's Catholic, don't you? You really just know, this is a Catholic parish. 40, 40 adults baptized. Because, just like us, they use the Alpha Course as the best known tool for evangelization. I think I said a few weeks ago, even the, the man who established the Alpha Course, Nicky Gumbel, he said, if we find something better, we'll start using that. We're not completely focused on Alpha, it's the best we have at the moment. Now, for us to develop as Mary, the Mother of God, has, we need the entire parish to be invitational, constantly invitational, inviting and calling people to share with us, to come on Alpha with us, so like those 40 brothers and sisters, they can experience the love of the Father poured into their hearts. And those 40 brothers and sisters, that was a great experience, but they wanted more. They wanted the spirit of baptism. They wanted access to Jesus, the bread of life, and to the cup of freedom. And so were baptized as you and I are, and have this ability to share. It is our entire responsibility to be invitational. There's 30 or so people here. I can speak to one or two. You can speak to 60 or 90. It obviously multiplies. But we need everyone to be doing it, to be invitational. Now, most of you know Mary Tipper. She's a kind of straight-speaking lady, is she not? Yeah. Rather, she's definitely straight-speaking. When asked, why did you go to Alpha? She said, complete honesty, he was going on about it all the time, and I thought, well, if I go, maybe he'll shut up. <laughs> she came, she's been now on two, she absolutely loves it, because, yes, she knew the love of the Father, but she's now experienced it in a most profound way. And when she goes out for her daily walks, socially distanced, she's talking to people and saying, oh, you must come to Alpha. I'll let you know when Alpha is. Do you want to come? It's phenomenal. She has become invitational. Now, do not be put off when you ask one person and they say, not right now, thanks very much, because you can feel deflated. It's something like you have to ask five or seven to get one person. I was asking Mary for two years before she said yes. So, you know, we simply have to continue to be invitational. Because our desire is for everyone to experience the love of the Father poured into their hearts.
Some of you have been to Alpha, been prayed with, you know the powerful experience. Some have attended part of an Alpha course. Some decided not to go forward for prayer at that time. This is now your opportunity to step forward, to grasp this opportunity from Jesus who has opened the way to the Father. So make your decision, I'm going to go to this one. And think for five people you're going to invite. Pray for them first, a lot, and then invite them. And don't be discouraged. Keep on inviting them. And know that at some point, the nudge from the Lord, the encouragement of your words, they'll come along. And they'll have this most profound experience of the love of the Father poured into their hearts. So let's stand. The house of the Lord stands firm forever. As his living stones, we pray for the needs of our world. That the church may show that all creation is sacred and worthy of our respect. We remember Pope Francis on his pilgrimage of peace and reconciliation to Iraq. That the buildings that house the people, the church, may always be seen as places of hospitality, healing and welcome. For sadly, the many sick and suffering, especially those who are unable to gather with the church, that they may experience through our prayer, through the Holy Spirit, that they still are sharing in the body of Christ. That the dead, washed clean of their sins, may enter the heavenly city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Lord, hear us. Oh, in moments of silence, we offer our personal. And for those we've been asked to pray for by name, we lift them to the healing Father. For Father Brandon Hoban, whose condition has deteriorated and he is now in Arrow Park Hospital. Deacon Philip has improved and hopes to leave Arrow Park very soon. Hassan, Pat, Lillian Brocklesby, Julius and Nancy, Edmund, Eileen Rushton, Helen Schofield, Anne Farrell, Mark Wilson, Sean, Greg Colquitt, Tony, Lily Redican, Jissy, Paul Waller, John Kelly, Patricia Baker, Maggie Morley. Let's remember all those, apparently up to a million, suffering now with long COVID, completely debilitating. For all the sick of the parish, all those we have concerns for. Lord, hear us. Oh, and we pray the Lord will truly bless Alpha 7. Lord, hear us. Oh, For those who have died recently, Janet Matilda Collins and Ada Rooney, whose month mind is today. And we remember the intentions of Ed Milner. Eternal God, throughout human history, 
You have chosen to be present whenever, wherever your people are. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus to be the temple of God among us. Help us to be living stones, always joined to the cornerstone, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Right, Angel May, you need to find with Dad the part where it goes to Hosanna, okay? Find that part. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every word, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the, sacri the sacred paschal feasts, with the joy of mind made pure, so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Amen. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The Lamb of God. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
before the final program to listen to a statement from somebody who has been through the Alpha course and did become a Catholic. So, you know, but we see the opportunities that lie before us. Let's pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you would like to turn around and look behind you onto the choir loft, who we'll put those there? Okay, they are our new cameras for live streaming, for recording, for uploading, whatever that means. Um, once, once I know a little bit of how to use them, we'll move from the camera on the tablet to, to those. The quality and the clarity is absolutely incredible. So it'll be really beneficial to those who are watching with us online or when they watch on follow-up. be absolutely brilliant. Please do join us either physically or virtually the Stations of the Cross tomorrow evening here at 6 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.